So far we've learned to identify subjects and predicates and within the predicate we've learned to identify two kinds of objects, the indirect object and the direct object. Well those aren't the only functions that phrases can perform and we have to move on and this time we're going to have a look at some different data. If we took a simple-minded approach to uh, the business of identifying units inside the predicate, we'd say, well, this is easy. A wreck is a direct object. The car appeared a wreck. Appeared what? A direct object. Well, it's not the same as the car hit a wreck, where the car and the wreck are different things. Here, the wreck is, in fact, the car. Um, there isn't some new thing. It's the same thing. The jury seemed a disgruntled group. The underlined unit is telling us more about the jury. The jury is a disgruntled group. And with the verb become, we also get the same kind of situation. After the becoming, the town is a disturbed community. We don't have two different communities. We've only got the one. So we're going to say that the underlined noun phrases in this case are not objects, but intensive complements. Well, the first characteristic that we've seen so far um, is that they're not new entities. They refer back. They tell us more about, well, the example so far are noun phrases. But what if we say uh, the car appeared in great shape? Well, that would be a prepositional phrase. The jury seemed out of sorts prepositional phrase. The jury seemed very angry. Adjective phrase. So intensive complements can be noun phrases or adjective phrases or prepositional phrases. And as with all the other cases we've looked at, um, only certain kinds of verbs have them. Verbs like seem and be and appear and become. And they don't take direct objects. They take intensive complements. Well, sometimes the intensive complement doesn't come straight after the verb. It comes after a direct object. So sentences of that sort, clauses of that sort, take a subject and then a verb, then a direct object, and then an intensive complement which tells you more about the direct object. If an election is going on, someone gets elected to a particular post. And the post is um, what they then Ah, so if noun phrase gets elected as president, then the noun phrase is the president after the election. If someone gets named, then the name is them after that, and so forth. Uh, if we find something boring, then boring is, is it. It tells us more about the direct object. In this case, we've just put NP in there because we're gradually becoming linguists, and that's the sort of thing linguists do. Well, can we uh, make a distinction here? If Jean sold Frida a bicycle, then the bicycle is what got sold, so that's the direct object, and Frida is the indirect object. If Tom owns a camera, uh, the camera isn't telling us more about Tom. It's uh, a new thingy, and uh, it's a direct object. Uh, what about Sylvia? She likes her breakfast. Um, that's fine. The direct object is her breakfast. But what about the hot bit? Well, that's telling us more about breakfast, isn't it? It's an intensive complement. Likes her breakfast hot. Her breakfast is hot. Jonty appeared very shy. Very shy is telling us more about Jonty. Very shy is an adjective phrase. And this is also an intensive complement. If the captain is doing some judging, then Harriet is the person being judged. She's the direct object. And uh, the most valuable player is Harriet. Um, she's the most valuable player. So that's an intensive compliment.